everyone, it's Emily Graziano here and I'm here to do a review of the Ace Frehley complete solo record, Frehley's Comet released in 1989 on Atlantic Records. And before I begin, I just wanted to say thank you for understanding why I haven't been making videos lately. Um, for those of you who don't know, my mom was in the hospital two weeks ago. She's home now and she's on the mend. It was not related to the pandemic. I repeat, not related. Um, so I just want to thank you for all your well wishes and prayers and concerns. My, I really appreciate it and so does my mom. So I just want to say thank you for understanding at this time why I haven't been doing videos lately. But I, I'd like to get back into it and I'm going to start with Ace Riley's comment. So there's no better way to have some fun than review Ace's first solo record away from Kiss. Okay, so I actually found this copy. It's an original 1989 pressing on my 24th birthday at Beverly Records um, here in Chicago. And it was really fun because I saw a copy of this in like my local half price books, but it was A, overpriced, and B, somebody like drew on the cover. Like they they colored in Ace's name with like a, a blue pen and they, they drew like this A on the cover like around here. I'm like, I don't want that. I want a vandalized record and I'm like, well, I guess I'll find it again one day. And I did. So it was really good that I did not pick it up then. So there's only this discrepancy right here, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. And this is better than like the vandalized front. So, I mean, a little thing in the corner here, not bad. I mean, it could be worse. It could be over one of the words or something or over somebody's face. That would have been even worse. So to have this right here, I'm pretty lucky that it turned out that way. But um, I'm just going to go through the record and just, I, I'm so, I can give technicalities, but I think that's kind of boring. I think I'd rather give you my opinion, opinion of them. And remember, I'm not professional at this. I'm not a professional critic. I don't know how to read music. I am just another fan in the crowd. I'm just another face in the crowd. Oh, Peter Chris won for all reference. Ugh, that record is all bad. Okay. Okay, so this album starts off with the song Rock Soldiers. And to me, Rock Soldiers is the shock me of Ace's solo career. Like, you think about Ace Fraley and you're going to think about this song along with Shockley because it is that iconic, it is that essential, it is his signature song, one of his signature songs overall, but for his solo career, THE signature song. So to me, I can't imagine this record starting off any other way than with Rock Soldiers. And it's interesting because I used to watch this music video when I was little. My mom had it on a bootleg tape of just like Kiss music videos. And it always used to make me like question like, okay, why isn't Ace like in the makeup? Like, why is he not with Kiss? But I never questioned it. I just, well, no, I never questioned it like, oh, why is he not with Kiss in the sense of he should be with Kiss? I'm just like, oh, is this like, like, I don't care. You know, Ace is seeing, I don't care that he's not with Kiss, but it was just kind of a thing of like, well, why isn't he with Kiss? But it doesn't matter because he's singing. It was kind of like that type of a deal. And this song is autobiographical from the 1983 car accident that Ace and Anton were in with the DeLorean automobile. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be laughing. Uh, it was chronicled in Ace's book. And just reading that whole chapter the whole time, I'm like, just making these faces, like, like a mime, like, like, just shock after shock after shock of, Ace, you are so lucky to be alive. Ace, how did you survive this? Ace, you know how dangerous that is. Like, you could have died, and Ace knows it. So, reading that was just kind of crazy, because, you know, here I, even though I didn't listen to this album completely, I used to listen to that song when I was little, just that one song. And to make that connection finally that, oh my god, it was real, that was a revelation as an adult. So, um, 
the next song on here is Breakout, and it was co-written by Eric Carr, which the drum riff was actually taken and used as Car Jam 81 on Kiss Revenge. Um, it's a Todd lead, Todd, Todd Holworth right there, it's Todd lead, and um, I wish they made a music video out of this, it would have been really fun. I understand why they didn't, because Ace is not singing lead, and you know, you can't have a, a Fraley's Comet music video with a, with a new band, you know, because Fraley's Comet was like semi-new at this point. It was a new band, and you can't ha not have Ace sing lead, so I understand why they didn't, but it would have been really, really fun. Um, growing up, I knew about this song that Eric Carr like co-wrote other stuff just because my mom had like documentaries and books about Eric Eric Carr but I never heard the song until I actually listened to it on this record so again as an adult that was a revelation like oh this is what they're talking about so that was really really fun um the next song on here is Into the Night and this is the New York groove of Ace's record for, for Fraley's Comet um because it's a cover version of the Russ Ballard song. And there is nobody who can do a cover version like Ace. I think next to the Beach Boys, Ace can do a cover version and do it well where you don't want to like go back and listen to the original because this version is so, so good. I always say, if you're watching any type of a remake, whether you're listening to a cover version of a song or watching a remake of a film, and you want to go back and listen to the original, the remake or the cover version is no good in the first place. So, but it is not the case here because this is just a really fun song. For some reason, I could imagine this song being used as like a perfume ad. Because there was, I used to have this um, body spray. It wasn't like a professional perfume. It was just like a body spray called Into the Night. And I'm like, oh my God, how fun would it be to make like a perfume ad? And you know, you hold up the stick and be like, into the night. <laughs> that would be really fun. Too bad I don't have the perfume anymore. I would have held it up here and I'd be like, I would have sprayed it. I'd be like, into the night. <laughs> that would have been really fun. Okay. Um, the next song on here is called Something Moved. It's by, again, by Todd. Sung by Todd. Um, and this is one of my favorites on the album. It wasn't my favorite to begin with, but it really, really grew on me. And the cool thing about this song is that it's a total Todd creation. He wrote it, and he did the music to it, and he sang it. And that, to me, is a really cool thing, because it shows that Ace is just a collaborative person, and that he, well, we already knew that with Kiss, but, like, it's, it shows that, you know, as head of his own band, he's not a diva. He... He wants to use the best songs with the best people on the songs. It's all about the final product and not just about, it. I'm the star of this band. So I, I found that very, very cool. Uh, and the last song on side one, We Got Your Rock, I feel like it's an anthem song. Um, it's like a power song, like, we got your rock right here. Like, it's just kind of like a power song. And I find it interesting, and this is totally unintentional. But, uh, where is it? Oh, uh, here we go. Um, the lyric, I'll shout it out loud. <laughs> I just thought that was a fun kiss Easter egg. It's totally unintentional, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, just as a kiss fan, you can't help but think, ah, oh, shout it out loud. So I, I just thought that was really fun. And, uh, that was the last on side one. So flipping over the record and the paper, because that's when my notes started. The first song on side two is Love Me Right, and this, for some reason, I don't know why, is one of my top favorites on the album. I don't know why. Um, it randomly gets stuck in my head. Like, I swear to God, I'll be like, love me right. <laughs> like, I'll just get it stuck in my head and start singing it around the house or something, like softly, because I don't sing very well. but. It just gets stuck in my head. And I want to mention something funny that Ace mentioned in his book. If you've read his book, No Regrets. Um, Ace mentioned in the book that, like, when he was younger, he used to, like, take this little miniature teddy bear around and, like, keep it in his, like, suit jacket or his sport jacket or whatever. And, like, show girls the little teddy bear in order to score dates at, like, the pub or the club or something like that. And this song mentions a teddy bear, so I just laugh because of that connection. I just laugh. It's cute, I think. 
<laughs> but and, and and there's more connections to like oh Ace Vince is a teddy bear. <laughs> He's the official like. If he he has the space bear, but just the fact that he mentions the teddy bear in the lyrics, it's probably unintentional, again, but it's just like, oh my gosh, that's a coincidental, um, unintentional coincidence. It's just really funny. So, I find that hysterical. I, I just, I love this song, for some reason. Okay, the next song on here, Calling to You, is again sung by Todd, and it's a really groovy song. I really like it. The chorus is super catchy. And if we, as Aces fans, are the rock soldiers, this is the song that calls us to be a rock soldier. Like, it's, it's, um, it's calling to you, strike up the drum, stand up and shout, it's only rock and roll, that's what we're all about. This is the call to be a rock soldier. So I just thought that was really a fun thing, in my point of view. Remember, it's all my point of view. This could, it, that could mean nothing to somebody else, but I just thought of that as, like, something fun. Okay, uh, the next song on here, Dolls. I'll admit, I'm not a big fan of the song, but then I stopped and I thought about it. This is a very personal song to Ace. In fact, this may be the most personal song on the album, next to Rock Soldiers, because it's written about, like, Monique and her dolls, and I question, is Monique on the chorus? Because you hear a little girl, like, singing the backup vocals on the chorus. And I'm like, well, is that Monique? Is it? Now, I don't know. It doesn't mention that she is on here. It, she's mentioned in the thank yous, like, special thanks to Monique and Jeanette. But she's not, like, mentioned in the credits, like, technical credits. I just think maybe that could be Monique. No, I, I don't know. I just, just a thought. And then I totally understand what this song is about because the dolls, when, when you just look at dolls, and I admit, I used to be a major fan, major player of dolls. Like, I had a ton of dolls growing up. American Girl dolls, Bratz dolls, Barbie dolls, and for the record, Bratz vs. Barbie, I'm a total Bratz style fan. Like, I, I had both, but I preferred to play with Bratz dolls. It's a true thing. Um, Polly Pockets, Magnetic Polly Pockets, there's a difference between regular and magnetic, and I had both. Um, God, what else did I have? I had a ton of dolls, like, little miniature Bratz dolls, Bratz doll kids dolls. Like, I had, like, Kelly dolls from Barbie. Like, I had... Wizard of Oz dolls, Disney princess dolls. I had a lot of dolls growing up. Actually, I think about it now and it's a little bit ridiculous about, about what I did have. But just like the lyrics, like, I wake up, they're always there, waiting just to freely please me. Um, like, I get that. Like, they're just there and they stare at you. And the reason why I'm not in a, an adult doll collector is because dolls just, like, sitting looking back at you kind of freaks me out and that's probably the real reason a big reason why I'm not like an adult doll collector because you know some people they grow out of playing with them but they just collect them as adults or whatever that's not me like I it just it, it freaks me out to just have them sitting there and have them looking at me and and it just it brings me creepiness the feeling of creepiness not joy of having the doll. So I, I really understand what this song is about. I just don't like the arrangement. But it has grown on me, I will say that. And the next song, Stranger in a Strange Land, I'll admit this is probably my least favorite song on this album. I don't really like it that much, but I understand that this song kind of plays off his spaceman persona because it's like, oh, I'm a stranger in a strange land. Like, if I'm not from this planet, I'm a stranger here. So I get that. That may or may not have been the intention of the song. That's just the way I interpret it. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. It's just not my favorite. And then to end this album, Fractured 2, the signature instrumental piece on an Ace Fraley album. I'll admit, it's not Fractured Mirror, nothing can be, nothing ever will top that, but this is really good because I think it represents continuity. Like, oh, on my first ever solo album, even though it was with Kiss, I'm gonna have a uh, instrumental piece on now on my 
solo solo album away from Kiss, I'm still going to have an instrumental piece. It's just a, what I do. And it's just really fun because it is continuity. And I think that's fun. So, um, show this. For, I, I, I swear, is this one of the Muppets? Or, um, hmm. I forget what who this is, but it's some kind of character from a movie, I know. It kind of freaks me out, and then on the back it's the negative of that. Kind of freaks me out in the negative, but negative pictures always freak me out. Like, this isn't the Muppet. Who is this? I'm, I can't think about it. I can't think who this is. But anyway, this is a really fun album. I really enjoy it. I'd like to review Second Sighting. Hopefully soon. I mean, I don't own Second Sighting, but I can still review it. But, um, again, Ace, he does look spaced out in this picture. Like, I don't know. He's not there emotionally or mentally. He's gone. <laughs> but he, I love it how they're all wearing, like, the signature lightning bolt pin, and Ace is also wearing the necklace. That's awesome. This album, I think, has aged better than some like typical hair metal albums. I mean, um, this came out in 87 and the same year as Crazy Nights. I would rather listen to this than Crazy Nights. I mean, when your walls come down on Crazy Nights, I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> That's one of my least favorite songs ever. But um, this, I really have a lot of love for it. You know, Ace, Anton, John Reagan, um, and Todd Howard and Anton Fig, for those of you who don't know, they made one hell of a quartet, and it's just a really fun album that I enjoy and that I'm glad to have, and that, um, I am just really, really glad to do this review, and I just want to thank you for listening to this review, thank you for understanding the circumstances, and I just want to say, I'm Emily Graziano, thank you so much for listening. Have a great day, and um, look out for more album reviews in the future. I, I really like doing them, and I think I will get better at them the more I do them. Thank you so much for watching this, and have a great day. See you soon. Bye.